Hi, I'm Alan Bassbaum in the Department of Anatomy at the University of California, San Francisco. And I'm Joao Braz, an assistant research in Professor Alan Basom Lab. We're here today to discuss the results of a paper that we recently published in the May 27th issue of Neuron, uh, where we describe the use of embryonic cell transplants to treat a nerve injury-induced chronic pain condition called neuropathic pain. This picture is taken from the classic textbook of John Benica and illustrates a patient with neuropathic pain from peripheral nerve injury, small damage in the arm. And as you can see, there is excess hair growth, but the most importantly, there's ongoing burning pain and incredible mechanical hypersensitivity. This is a condition that is very unresponsive to narcotics or to NSAIDs, which are the classic drugs used to treat inflammation. What causes Neuropathic pain isn't completely known, but one of the major contributors is a loss of inhibition, probably at the level of the spinal cord. And that's illustrated in this diagram where the major players in the spinal cord are illustrated. You have primary afferent fiber that carries the input from the arm in blue, releasing glutamate, an excitatory neurotransmitter. And then there are many inhibitory interneurons, most of which are GABAergic. In the setting of nerve injury, there is a loss of GABAergic interneurons. There may actually be a frank loss of the neurons or certainly a loss of the ability of the existing neurons to generate inhibition. And reasoning this, when there's this loss of inhibition, inputs produce excessive pain and that is the problem that needs to be treated in neuropathic pain. Our approach, a question we try to address in this paper, is whether we can treat what is in effect a disease of neuropathic pain, namely the loss of inhibition. It's in effect a disease of the nervous system. And the approach we took is built upon some work of colleagues who demonstrated that it is possible to use cells derived from the embryonic mouse cortex that are the cells of origin of the GABAergic interneurons of the neocortex. They derive from a small region called the medial ganglionic eminence. And these cells disperse throughout the cortex during development. They can be isolated and transplanted into the spinal cord, and that was our approach. And here's the experimental design. We have primary afferents, we have inhibitory interneurons, and after injury, there is a loss of the inhibitory control, and we ask the question, could we take inhibitory interneurons from the embryonic cortex and transplant them into the spinal cord to replace the missing inhibition and thereby treat the disease of neuropathic pain? The first question was whether these cortical cells can actually survive outside of the cortex, in this instance, the spinal cord. As you can see here in this image, this is a section from a spinal cord of a mouse that was transplanted with cells, and the cells actually express a reporter gene, the GFP, so that's why you can see them here in green. And you can see that one day after the transplantation, the cells form a cluster at the injection site. In contrast, you can see that one month after the transplantation, cells now have dispersed throughout the spinal cord around the injection site. And not only have they survived, but now they extend these long processes and they have this intense arborization, as you can see here in this picture. So the next question was to um, uh, determine whether these cells can actually integrate into the host circuitry. So for this, we injected uh, the cells into uh, transgenic animals that express a tracer, the WGA. It's a tracer that can go from neuron to neuron. So in these animals, what we did was to induce the expression of the tracer in primary afferent neurons and look for the transport of the tracer into the MG cells. And we show in this paper that that's the case. The cells, the MG cells, do receive input from the primary afferents because we could, we could detect the tracer, uh, the WGA, into these cells. Not only these cells receive inputs from the primary afferents, but they're also able to actually interact with local neurons. You can see here in this picture, in red, it's a pain transmission neuron that is also labeled with this tracer. And what you can see is that this intense arborization, innervation in green around this cell, showing that there is an interaction between MG transplanted cells and the local neurons. So next we ask, uh, is actually this integration functional? So to address this question, we uh, administer peripherally a, a noxious chemical agent to be able to activate neurons in the spinal cord. And you can see here in this picture showing the pattern of expression of FOSS, which is an immediate early gene, which is a marker of neuronal activation. So the question was, is this peripheral stimulation now able to induce FOSS in the MGE uh, transplanted cells? And the answer is yes. You can see that we determined that up to 35% of the MG cells actually express FOSS here in, uh, in yellow in, in this picture. The next question was to ask whether these MG transplants now can reverse the mechanical hypersensitivity that is induced by a nerve injury, which is one of the hallmarks of neuropathic pain. So for this, we made a, 
a nerve injury model called SNI for spinal nerve injury. And what you can see is that the mechanical thresholds after nerve injury drop significantly. And after uh, the nerve injury, you, we transplanted the mice either with medium or the cells. And you can see in the diagram is that whereas the uh, mice that received the medium only, so the control mice in blue in the diagram, the mechanical threshold of these animals stayed pretty low. It never came back. The, in red, you can see that the animals that received the MG transplants, the mechanical threshold of these animals increased progressively over time. And four weeks after the transplantation, you can see that now the mechanical thresholds uh, are back to baseline. So the question is, where do we go next with this? Uh, our next experiment will be to use human cells transplanted into immunocompromised mice to see if we can replicate this with uh, human cells that are destined to become GABAergic interneurons. And the long-term goal, of course, is to, uh, assuming everything works well, take this to a human neuropathic pain condition where we hope to be able to treat uh, a pretty devastating and difficult to treat problem.